Hello there guys, welcome to another episode of Star Wars Comics and today we continue with issue number 13 of the Darth Vader comics that came out yesterday. After his crazy vision against Obi-Wan where he had the high ground, his master suddenly woke him up. Lord Vader, come to me. I have a task for you. Yes, my master. Cut to the Imperial Palace on Coruscant. The Emperor was determined to evolve his empire into more than just a political abstraction. Now three years had passed since the institution of the Empire, and yet the Imperial Senate still remains. However, the truth was that there was only one voice, only Palpatine, and time has come for everyone to understand. They wanted to start with Mon Cala. They will pay their price for defiance. Proud that the military might of the Empire has risen over these past three years and that it is time for the galaxy to be aware of this. Vader however asks if the station is ready, of course meaning the Death Star. We get a brief mention of Director Krennic and his scientists. The Death Star is not yet operational, however with the rest of their might they will bend everyone to their will. To pique his interest even more, Palpatine tells Vader that the Mon Calamari king is using the same negotiation tactics and skills of a very familiar foe. It seemed to be a Jedi. Vader needed to hear no more. We go outside in the orbit of the planet Mon Cala. The Imperial Star Destroyer Sovereign is very much present. Aboard the Star Destroyer, we see that it is Grand Moff Tarkin, briefing his many commanders that are present, preparing them for the swift mission that is about to take place. We go to Dak City, where the Mon Cala King is currently talking with an Imperial Ambassador. The question is simple. Does does Mon Cala still wish to remain a part of the Galactic Empire? Naturally, the king was totally defiant, since the Empire would demand every resource it could grab their hands on and practically leave Mon Cala and its people in the dust. Using fear-mongering, the ambassador goes on to say that the Empire would compensate the Mon Cala people with protection, keep them safe. Angrily, the king responds with protect us from who? The galaxy is at peace. Still, the ambassador is persistent that they do not need to haggle on this issue. We are all on the same side. Now it's Radis's turn. A quick cameo from Radis, who notably says that the giant battleship you parked in orbit around our planet suggests otherwise. Having said everything that there is in these negotiations, the ambassador takes a leave, wishes the best for both parties, and proceeds to his ship. At that moment, Tarkin is informed that the negotiations were not so productive but still ongoing. Suddenly a new vessel appeared. Tarkin knew all too well who it was. It represented an entirely different form of diplomacy. As the King and Radus were contemplating on how the negotiations went, suddenly Radus notices another shuttle coming. The ship lands. Out of it come three Inquisitors. When seeing what is transpiring, the Mon Cala stopped the Inquisitors right there. It was in fact Akbar. At this time, he was still a commander. He is informed that the Inquisitors are here to search the area. If they are interfered in any way, then this is seen as an attack on the Galactic Empire. The Ninth Sister went as far as to introduce her boss. Darth Vader, who had come to personally oversee the search. Still, Akbar was defiant. He wasn't about to let the Empire come willy-nilly and assert their dominance over the Mon Cala people. While Akbar was still protesting, the ambassador's ship had just exploded to pieces, killing innocent Imperials who were just doing their duty. Of course, this was a web of lies that would be used by Tarkin and the Empire to invade the planet presenting this as a direct attack on the Empire, blaming the Mon Cala for the death of the Imperial Ambassador. The King is desperate. He is asking for a Master Jedi. He says to the Master Jedi that they have sent ships, the Imperials, they are landing an army, they are invading, but the Jedi says to be calm. We always knew this was a possibility. He would learn of who had come, Inquisitors, who the Jedi could deal with. But there was another, 
a tall, black armored, masked man. The king informs the Jedi that Akbar didn't get his name, but the Jedi already did. It was Skywalker. With the comic ending here, it is pretty crazy to see that this is a surviving Jedi who knows all too well who Vader actually is, his real identity as Anakin Skywalker. Now my crazy self, and I know a lot of you do want that, I would really, really want this to be Mace Windu, although I don't think so. If, if they show that Mace Windu had survived, then that would be the coolest thing ever, and they are really hiding this Jedi for the most part, for us to not be able to see anything. So leave a like down below if you'd like this Jedi to be Mace Windu, actually revealed to be Mace Windu. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was Darth Vader issue number 13 and yeah it's gonna be really fun to get 14 when it comes out and I will present it to you guys immediately. Thank you for watching this video guys. I really appreciate your support. Leave a comment and a like down below as I said and lastly may the force be with you always.